in the embarrassing position of being unable to do your child's arithmetic homework because of the current revolution in mathematics teaching known as the new math. So as a public service here tonight, I thought I would offer a brief lesson in the new math tonight. We're going to cover subtraction. This is the first room I've worked for a while. It didn't have a blackboard, so we will have to make do with more primitive visual aids, as they say in the ad biz. <laughs> Consider the following subtraction problem, which I will put up here. 342 minus 173. Now, remember how we used to do that. 3 from 2 is 9, carry the 1. And if you're under 35 or went to a private school, you say 7 from 3 is 6. But if you're over 35 and went to a public school, you say 8 from 4 is 6. <laughs> and carry the one, so we have 169. But in the new approach, as you know, the important thing is to understand what you're doing rather than to get the right answer. <laughs> Here's how they do it now. You can't take three from two. Two is less than three, so you look at the four in the tens place. Now that's really four tens, so you make it three tens, regroup, and you change a ten to ten ones, and you add them to the two and get twelve, and you take away three, that's nine. Is that clear? Now instead of four in the tens place, you've got three because you added one, that is to say ten to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look in the hundreds place. From the three, you then use one to make ten ones, and you know why four plus minus one plus ten is fourteen minus one, because addition is commutative, right? And so you got thirteen tens, and you take away seven, and that leaves five. Well, six, actually, but... <laughs> The idea is the important thing. <laughs> now go back to the hundreds place. You're left with two and you take away one from two and that leaves... Everybody get one? Not bad for the first day. Hooray for new math, new math. It won't do you a bit of good to review math. It's so simple, so very simple that only a child can do it. Now that actually is not the answer that I had in mind because the book that I got this problem out of wants you to do it in base eight. But don't panic. Base eight is just like base 10, really, if you're missing two fingers. Shall we have a go at it? Hang on. You can't take three from two. Two is less than three, so you look at the four in the eights place. Now that's really four eights, so you make it three eights, regroup, and you change an eight to eight ones, and you add to the two, and you get one two base eight, which is ten base ten, and you take away three, that's seven. Okay? Now instead of four in the eights place, you've got three, because you added one, that is to say eight, to the two, but you can't take seven from three, so you look at the sixty-fours. Sixty-four. How did sixty-four get into it? I hear you cry. Well, 64 is 8 squared, don't you see? When you ask a silly question, you get a silly answer. From the 3, you then use 1 to make 8 ones. You add those ones to the 3, and you get 1, 3, base 8. Or in other words, in base 10, you have 11, and you take away 7, and 7 from 11 is 4. Now go back to the 64s. You're left with 2, and you take away 1 from 2, and that leaves... Now let's not always see the same hands. <laughs> One, that's right. Whoever got one can stay after the show and clean the erasers. Hooray for new math, new math. It won't do you a bit of good to review math. It's so simple, so very simple, that only a child can do it. Come back tomorrow night. We're going to do fractions. <laughs> You know, I've often thought I'd like to write a mathematics textbook someday because I have a title that I know will sell a million copies. I'm going to call it Tropic of Calculus. Uh -huh. 